Thank you. Um, just a very quick moment of silence for our beloved Blue Jays. I don't know if I should be excited that we made it this far or disappointed that we missed so many opportunities. But anyway, thank you. I'm excited to, uh, to be here. We're going to talk, I'm going to talk today about building a new category within financial services. Um, Fund through is an invoice funding platform, so we eliminate the wait time for small businesses who invoice and then have to wait 30, 60, 90, sometimes even more days to get paid. So we offer that short-term uh, cash solution so that as soon as they invoice, they can get that invoice paid so that they can then grow their business. I'm going to start by asking a by show of hands, who here has heard the term factoring? Wow. This really is a finance-driven fin fintech session. Who here has understood that when you sell something and you invoice for it, that you've actually generated an asset against which you can borrow for your company? Same amount of people, okay. This is not representative of the Canadian population. <laughs> uh, let me just, in the backdrop of this landscape, uh, the landscape where Canadians have an amazing relationship with their banks. We love our banks, we're proud of our banks. Banks consistently rank as some of the top brands in our country. Uh, Canadian consumers and small business owners tend to amalgamate all of their accounts, all of their products with one bank. I mean, I, I won't ask the question, but I'll, I'll put it out there hypothetically. Who, who here has a checking account, a visa, or a, another credit card, a mortgage, um, and a brokerage account, all with the same bank? The answer is most Canadians, it appears. This is different than in the US. So within this landscape, where there's a lot of trust built within the banking system, Canadians like their banks, how can we build a new category within financial services? So the first one is avoid technical lingo. So uh, when I started this business two years ago, as Alex mentioned, I was a former investment banker, and I would say something like this. Well, you can leverage your receivables to get the working capital that you need to improve your Kager. And everybody would look at me like that. So if you look at this, the number of Canadians who search for business loan online is massive. Don't even try to compete if you're a fintech there. The number of Canadians who search for what we actually do, which is invoice factoring, is minuscule. Nobody searches for this in Canada. So what we realized after way too long, by the way, is that perhaps we should use the words that our users use and not the words that we think that our users use, uh, both within online and when you're describing the business out in the world. So that was lesson number one. Seems obvious in hindsight, uh, but when you look at the, uh, the difference between searches for business loan and searches for invoice factoring, uh, you'll understand the, the magnitude difference. So the next thing is, when you're dealing with a, you're creating a category that doesn't exist, it's really hard to go out and explain to people, this is what it's going to do, and this is what it's like. Because there's nascent demand. So you might get false negatives where people say, ah, I would never do something like that. You might get false positives that say, yeah, this is great. I, I'd want it. But they don't really know what it was. And when you then present it to them, they may not actually buy it. So you know, in this day and age, it's much easier to just mock things up and take it out and get immediate feedback. So that's what we did. So we created um, these screens that basically show what a dashboard might look like. And then we can very easily communicate. All you have to do is log in through your accounting software. Your, all of your invoices will get populated. You then click on which button you want to invoice. A pop-up pops up and tells you how much you can get, tells you exactly what the payment terms are and what your limit is on the right. Would you like this? And the aha moment happened where people said, wow, this is awesome. I can get paid on my invoices right away, not leverage my receivables to get the working capital that I need to grow. So this was a game changer for us, to be able to go out and actually demonstrate that it was that easy um, using simple tools like this um, opens up the market. So the next thing is when you're trying to find product market fit in a new category where trust is so important, you're likely, like every startup, going to be 
under-resourced and have too many things on the go. And customer support and customer service is one of those things that oftentimes gets sort of thrown to the, to, thrown to the side as you're building out product or as you're developing channels. Where you don't yet have product market fit, customer support is critical. You must take care of every customer that comes in the door. We have an NPS score, no joke, of 100 of our existing customers. Uh, as Andrew rightly put it, that's 100 of what they think of us, not of whether they would refer us to others because similarly, financial services seems to be a taboo subject that you tend not to share uh, with your friends. Not yet, anyway, we are gonna change that. Uh, um, but it's really important to take care of your existing customers. It's really important to respond really quickly over and over again to what you perceive to be the same questions. How much does it cost? How does it work? Just go to our website. It's very clear. It's there. But people want to know that there's a human on the other side, whether it's through chat, through email, through phone call. Be there for them. Learn from them. Understand what their needs are. Use it as an opportunity to be human with them so that you can then build out the experience that they want. Think outward in as opposed to inward out. Again, these all sound obvious. We didn't do many of these things. And the last lesson is, again, when you're trying to build a category, find channels where there are influencers and then use those influencers to act as, hey, we're in Influitive's office, to act as advocates for you. Uh, it works. Uh, if you convince those influencers that this is a tool or a product or a service, that their clients or that their friends or that their colleagues can use, they will then pass that on and you will be able to build a distinct channel that, is, that has a competitive moat because those influencers will be there for you. So that's my quick little presentation on trying to build a category, a niche category in the financial services world. Here is my team. Uh, we are hiring. We are looking, we just raised uh, our latest round, which we're very proud of. Um, we brought on uh, an investor called Scale Up Ventures, as among other, amongst others. Uh, so we are now aggressively hiring. If anybody is interested in marketing, community manager, content, social media, we're looking. If anybody is interested in data analytics, we are building out, we are scaling up our analytics team aggressively. We need a lot of folks to solve big problems using data. If anybody is an engineer um, who's uh, looking, to, uh, um, uh, looking to do back-end, front-end, uh, UX, UI, come talk to us. There are a few of my colleagues here who have uh, Fun3 t-shirts on. Come find us and uh, we'll, we'll get you the, the right information so that we can see if you're a fit. I'll open it up now, according to Alex, to questions. Did Influtive pay you for that fourth tip? No. <laughs> we help the community. Hey, thanks for coming, Stephen. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. How do you convince the customers that your solution's better than existing solutions like lines of credit or something like that? Yeah, so uh, most of our, our users are too small, too new, too fast growing, or need the capital too quickly um, to be able to uh, get that capital from, um, from a bank. We work really well though when you do have an existing line of credit because oftentimes what we offer is that short term cash flow that almost acts as a bulge when you already have a line of credit but you might have a seasonal rush um, to need it. Really what we're enabling our users to do is uh, get the cash that they need to grow their business using their own resources, right? It's an invoice that you know is gonna get paid and you just have to come on and get it paid quicker. As a sort of follow on to that, is there uh, a typical customer that you have, like in any sort of uh, type of small business? So anybody who invoices and waits to get paid is a possible market, uh, a possible customer for us. Realistically, 60% uh, of our users are service providers, anything from uh, traditional commercial services, janitorial, electrical, consulting, uh, IT, um, and 40% are, I call them widget uh, producers. So these are folks who sell to big box, big box retailers, folks who sell to other manufacturers, and they sell products. Is your typical customer one of those um, who have good credit or bad credit? Because I know in factoring and invoice receivables, that comes, that plays a big role as well. Yeah. Your collection, and the second part of that question is, do you guys fund this yourselves, or do you have 
um, investors that put money into this because it yeah. does get expensive. Right. So on your first question, I don't know. The beauty of invoice funding is that we fund based on the strength of who you're selling to. Uh, so we don't pull credit scores. We don't rely on personal credit. We don't rely um, on um, exclusively on your business credit. We do pull your, your business credit score occasionally. Um, but as we know, business credit scores are never really as indicative as, uh, as personal credit scores. We are relying on a lot of data. But primarily, what we're relying on is that you have invoiced. Your customer likes what it is that you have sold. And you are just waiting to get paid. On your second uh, question, we have um, some family offices and uh, a hedge fund um, who fund our loans. So we are a marketplace, um, or as close as you can get in, in Canada. We're not an open marketplace in that we don't uh, allow the public to fund through us, uh, but we do have this small group. Hey there. Do you uh, do some of the more traditional customer ver verification techniques that traditional uh, factoring companies use, such as contacting their customers and actually verifying to make sure those, uh, th those goods were received and to make sure they got the invoice and things of that nature, making sure their credit history is fine? Uh, that's where I guess a lot of factoring companies run into problems. I guess yeah. customers don't like that. So do you guys still employ those techniques at uh, Fund Through? Yeah, so when we started out, um, our vision originally was, okay, we can uh, take this concept of factoring, which is basically I can get unlimited access to capital. All I have to do is do what I do best, which is sell, and I can get it based on the credit worthiness of my customer, not on me. Um, we took that concept and we said, wow, this is awesome. Why does nobody know about this? And the reason nobody knows about it is precisely because of the, the reasons that you said. Nobody wants their customers to know. Nobody wants the hassle of, of going through it. They want the relationship between you and them. They don't want it having uh, involving the customer. Well, we tried originally um, to see if we can bring that experience online and make it easier, but still have a lot of that aspect. Uh, and what we found is that there is a small group that would appreciate that, but the market size isn't massive. And then we realized that, well, hey, if we tap directly into your accounting software and we partner with QBO, QuickBooks Online, and we partner with FreshBooks and we integrate with them so that you can apply online and we can get all of your data and we can see your invoicing history and we can see all um, uh, uh, that you've been getting paid on it, then we can use data to replace security. And what you're talking about is a form of security. And that was basically what we did. Um, so now you can go in on, your customers never know, you push a button, you can get the funding that same day or the next day, depending on the time. Um, and if you need much more money, then you can come to us and say, um, okay, we'll give you even more money, it'll even be at a cheaper rate, but we have to do some of that stuff. Thank you. One more question. Oh. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. Hi, Stephen. Uh, my name is James. Uh, firstly, I want to say that I think Fun Through is a great idea, especially with uh, leveraging uh, the customer's um, previous invoices. Um, I just wanted to ask you what you're currently do doing with data and analytics and uh, what you think in the future, um, what its benefits might be for uh, yeah, so we believe that um, we can use data over time to replace security. So in other words, without, if we can get data right and get enough information, then we won't require any guarantees from your company or we won't require a personal guarantee or we won't require all these other things. That's the big problem that we're trying to solve. We're obviously nowhere close to that. We're, we're still really early on. But by building a team, by looking at all of the data that we're getting from our users' accounting software, our users' bank accounts, seeing transactions, seeing trends, ultimately that's where we believe that we can get. And if we can do this right, then we can lend millions of dollars just by a click of that, uh, um, that that button through your accounting software. Any last questions? Well, thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.